<laughs> All right, let's get back into it. All right. So um, looking at our agenda, this is what I see we have left. We've got um, Reading Woods, site plan review guidelines, and then the three items on the planning updates and other business, which is the portable classrooms, the Reading Climate Action Committee, and then the approval of the minutes. Did I say anything? Mm -hmm. Do we want to stay on sort of the bylaw conversation and jump to the site plan review? We're not expecting anyone from Reading Woods, right? No, no, that was something we thought we could handle. Okay. I couldn't tell where this was, though. I mean, this site plan doesn't help me. <laughs> there, um... All right, let's, let, let's jump to that. Let's, let's go to Reading Woods? Yeah. yeah. So, it is around, around Building 5, and actually, I guess if you want to... Can you control the map? Um, like the Google map? Yeah. yeah. So it's around Building 5. It's the um, just outside of the, the Smart Growth District. It's building to the north, closer to South Street. The one, I guess you could say, in the northwest corner. That's Building 5. Okay, and that's the one over, over by the so-called emergency access? Yeah, it's, it's the one to the, it'd be to the west of that exit, and then there's the building on the, the right of that exit. So. What they found is that there was these evergreens, and I had been keeping an eye on them, and, and they're just not surviving. There's just, you know, too much cover, and at least three, maybe four, didn't survive. And so I had asked, um, I had asked that the landscape architect take a look at that and come up with, you know, maybe something else. I wasn't sure what sort of discussion was held at this uh, with the CPDC about this particular area, if any, because there is residential abutters on that side, so I wasn't sure how much discussion was had about any sort of buffering or screening in that area, so. Um, you know, we need the map to be We have an understand. extensive buffering and screening requirements, and so what was planted? What size evergreens had they, had they planted? That they time? were, they were smaller. Um, the plan calls for. Because <laughs> there's the the big do not build area in that corner. Mm -hmm. So it's a little. We need to understand wh where it is they're talking about. So it's going to be on this end. Okay, that's where the big trees are, yeah, the existing tree. But is the buffer to the left of this? Or yes. is this the buffer? So the plan that you have. <coughs> well, what, yeah, the, I mean, what's the red hashed thing? So the plan here, this is the residential area here. This is goes back into the garage of the building, and the building is right here. South Street would be 
to the north. Yep. And this wraps around and begins the Smart Growth District. So this is the area in which the evergreens were supposed to be planted, nine of them, the ones that were planted. So is, are we talking about right in that corner, right yes. where? So the, um, they were supposed to be planted along here. And mm. they really did mm. not do well. There was supposed to be a blend of plants in that buffer. Certain percentage of evergreen. Yeah, they had some trees. The trees are okay. Yeah. So they had removed just the dying evergreens, and they want to put these rhododendron. Rhododendron. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but they're only three to four feet. It's going to take five years for these to come up to where the evergreens that they just took out are. I know. Can you see back through to the property at that low level? The last time I went out, it was winter, so yeah, I mean, you could see, you could see through. There wasn't a lot of vegetation there. Well, there, the thing is, it says that they're, they start at three to four feet height. They grow to 15 to 20 feet. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow, I understand. We, we stepped back, this is what we did. We took a six or nine foot evergreen, potentially, mm. and went down three feet. So for the next two years they're going to see over the buffer that was there in 10 years the evergreens will be pretty full if they don't keep cutting them down I'm not sure what the growth rate is but I, I, I don't think it's more than a couple of feet a year it says slow growth rate yeah whatever that means well and especially if it's a if it's a shady area, then they're going to slow. They're going to be growing slower. I mean, can they consider planting them, planting bigger ones than three to four feet? I'm sure they could. Just to mitigate that. Well, the, okay, but so they, there are trees that are there. Yeah, they're existing. There's an existing, there's existing vegetation that's there, and then they planted shade trees, um, a certain amount of shade trees along this a path that goes back there. And then there was supposed to be nine evergreen trees. So is all, uh, are they just taking the nine, uh, leaving everything else where they are, yes. and taking the nine evergreen and replacing them with 27? Rhododendron. Rhododendron. Yes, the existing no. vegetation that's there now will stay. Okay, are, are the nine trees there? No. No. They died and they took them out? Yeah, either they're they're there and they're dead or they're going to be taking them out, but there were a few that they've already taken out. Okay. So I'm assuming that the nine trees took up about as much space as these, this planted area. Yeah, it's generally oh. in the same location, yeah. I'm trying to see if I can find the plan. Actually, maybe I'll find it on the other side. I mean, rhododendron do do grow big, and they they look good, and so on and so forth. But I mean, Nick's absolutely right; it'll take a while to. Got you know, to a certain extent, southeastern kind of exposure. What are you looking for, Jesse? I'm looking at the old plans here. Did you know it was moderately flammable? It was what? <laughs> I, do, I do now. Oh. <laughs> Attributes and features, moderately flammable. The plant. It's just 
a, that's something I had never considered about a plant, but I guess if you let it. I don't know, it just seems uncreative and it's not the mix or blend and, and it's going to be a pretty low canopy for a little while. And I think the intent of this was to fill in below the shade trees and below the, the big tall existing trees. Mm. So, can we, why don't we send that feedback back to them? Yeah, we can send that back and they can uh, take another look at it, see if they can maybe increase the height of what they have and... Or uh, a mixture. I mean, if they can find... Um, I'm trying to think of what... I've, I've got, got some evergreen shrubs. Evergreen is on the, uh, on the south, right? I have one some one I have some evergreens on my back line that are up against the, the woods and there are some tall trees that shade it from the south so all it's really getting is um, high sun and northern right. exposure really and that stuff just keeps growing so I would blend it with some other needle based evergreen right. shrub you want the sun to come in east and west as much as you get in the winter to warm <coughs> the house. So you, will want, you will not want evergreens on east and west. Yeah, but there's no houses near this, right? The houses are the, house, the houses on, on Curtis houses on Curtis are, are set up from the They're up here. This is all about just visual screen. Yeah. Uh, there's a solid fence there. Is that the solid fence? I don't remember. Mm -mm. I know it's sloping down a bit. Mm hmm Yeah. So the request is to f to see whether they can identify instead of replacing it with something that's short for mm -hmm. a considerable amount of time, a, a, a taller evergreen that may uh, well, that that may survive better in the shade in, in that shady environment. They could they could use these. They just need to blend it. I think with some other right. stuff. You know, we don't want it. We we would prefer not a monoculture kind of thing. You know, not all of one thing. Rather. Uh, if they can variegate it to a certain extent, you know, if they, can, you know, pick a number, uh, <coughs> sixteen row, sixteen roadies and, and four or something or other that, <laughs> yeah, that won't kill each other. Yeah, working with the tree warden. Uh, creative. Yeah. Huh. No, nothing. Oh. Just saying. Yep. I think that's, that's our feedback. Yep. All right. <coughs> Fruit trees, right away. <laughs> All right. Site plan review. <coughs> so, what was in our mail packet is still the latest and greatest, right? Yep. kind of ground us as to what brought us to this because I think a lot of this was in the bylaw itself right and now we're suggesting right so when the zoning advisory committee started looking at the site plan review section of the bylaw the consultant came back with um, sort of a short and long version at, at one point they said you know, this is way too much information come down with the shorter version um, so essentially he had taken out sort of what I'm calling now the site plan guidelines out of that to create a more shorter, streamlined regulations in the bylaw. So that was sort of a template that was crafted by the consultant during the, uh, during the review of site plan. And beyond that, I mean, the Zach has reviewed this, correct? Um, I think um, more on a high level where it was it was agreed and there was a consensus that that level of detail didn't necessarily need to be in the bylaw itself because it really added a lot of pages, yeah. which they felt was not necessary and could easily be dealt with 
in guideline format. So this would be a handout available at mm -hmm. the desk. Yeah, so we would put it online as part of our site plan application. So in the new bylaw, um, talking about the procedures, it, it says here that uh, an application for site plan review shall be submitted to the CPDC through the town planner's office for review and decision in accordance with the provisions of four, section 4.6. The contents of the application shall be as specified in the CPDC site plan review guidelines, regulations, and standards. All such applications shall include 12 copies, one electronic copy, and at its discretion, the CPDC may waive requirements submitted, uh, requirement to submit any of the required materials that it determines are not needed. And this, so, this gives us the flexibility to change this without having mm. a heavy <coughs> formal process, right? Right. It's a kind of, we, we would probably want to have some um, flexible wording in terms of, you know, project, the... You know, depending on the scope of the site plan or the scope of the project, I guess is the right way to put it, some number of these things wouldn't necessarily be required. Yeah. So we, we would like to have, you know, some of the, if you, what my wife would call weasel words, <laughs> saying this is what you need if it's, if, you know, if appropriate. Or a la carte. So, a la carte. Well, yeah. so this is this is in the, in the today. This is in the or last week. This was in the this was in the um, zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess the question sort of goes back to you all in the sense of: Is there do people come back and say, "Do I really need to do this?" And it, a do people are there pieces that people ask that of, and are there pe and are there times where you say, yeah, you, you, it's just, just do it this way, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and what are those pieces? And those are probably the pieces that we should be focusing in on, I would mm -hmm. think. Um, because when I read through this list of all the stuff, there's nothing in here that I would say for a bigger proposal that you want skipped. Um. Right. <clears throat> but for example, is what we have here for the application content, like like two, this is a project narrative detailing the proposal, including following elements where appropriate, or you know the including the elements that are part of the project because some projects don't have necessarily parking and circulation areas or don't necessarily have uh, aspects, you know, some some of the things, so. I, I would argue that we, just to be friendly to the people that build in this town from one little room to one big development, for these projects that you just mentioned, we may have a, a form prepared to fill it in as needed. These people are maybe very unsophisticated. Maybe like one owner, one homeowner, will thinking about to hire someone to do the work, maybe, at the birth of the project. They don't know exactly what they're going to do. They need to be able to see that. <coughs> they're not going to inherit it. We need to make like a form, whether it's web form or whatever, let's see what else. It's kind of like a one pager. in the feeling as applicable. Don't we already have that? We do have an application, yeah. yeah. That has a all of so these pieces on there. parking and circulation areas, calculation of area in square feet, all of this list of things. It has other things, it doesn't have exactly the origin, it has some of those. And I have seen that before. There's, there's a copy of it yeah, in, your, in your desk packet as part of the special permit um, for Walpole, they mm. filled one out. Basically, if this was a checklist with a little checkbox and an NA next to it, you could just check off the ones you're providing and not applicable to the ones that aren't. Right. Wall pull, huh? Um, page 
15 of your dust packets. 15 of your dust packets. Maybe I can still find my desk back. <laughs> yeah, I just went through and they checked off that was applicable mm -hmm. and yep. wrote not none to the impacts. There's a narrative. Oh, yeah. So what we could do is make sure that the application form, which matches. should, matches right. all of these, and you can scratch out number two. Number two. Because well, of the form. John said oh, yeah. also valuable, but you know, if you go with something a little bigger, like in, you know, in the several hundreds of thousands of construction costs, you may want some, you may want them to come in outside, but maybe they do this form, but they have to do something more because we will need to know more level of detail. They cannot just say, for example, it's not up for, maybe you need to know the gross square footage anyway. You know what I'm saying? Some other metrics. Well, so, but typically that's, that happens anyways, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, they'll, the ones that are more sophisticated will fill this out, but they'll also provide other information to bolster the, yes. the argument and won't just stick to, well, you didn't say you needed that. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, right, I mean, typically it's, yeah. it's you know, it's right. professional engineers or, or architects and say, well, they, you know, we need to show them this and we need to show them that. Yeah. <coughs> So I, I guess I wouldn't I wouldn't try and capture everything in this because that list is probably going to be well it, eye popping you know to right. try and cover everything. It may be the plan requirements so for this information you know from one two three for all the layers I mean, there's a lot of information in page two. But what we're discussing may actually be captured there. As opposed to a narrative or some other. But still, if you look at the second paragraph of the first page of the guideline, where it says an application for site plan review shall be submitted to CPDC through the town planner's office in accordance with the following as applicable to the project scope. Right. There it is. Yeah. And you're already giving them a heads up that not all of this will apply necessarily. Yeah, that's that's what I was trying to articulate. <laughs> Weasel words. first and start thinking, what do I have to do? And then when they sit with their engineer and they start thinking, do we have to provide all this? And the architect just starts going, no, we don't need this, this, or this. But it's that first step. It's those, I mean, not I mean, form, but people who just don't do this all the time that might be intimidated by a list this long, but then realize that it's really just two pieces. Do the people that come in with uh, about to start a project and see to be on the counter and the project is beginning to take shape, do they come with an architect or do they come solo? Depends. Sometimes we'll have a preliminary meeting and they'll be with their attorney, their architect, whatever, just as a preliminary meeting. Mm -hmm. Usually at the counter it's, it's one or two people from the project team. Would okay. it be helpful for, for Jesse and I to whittle this down a little bit and see what we can sh combine into the application, you know, just kind of take another pass at this? I'm looking at the mm -hmm. clock, 10, 15, and we still have a couple more things yeah. to get to. What I'm thinking, it was actually the application is, to a certain extent, the checklist 
And it might be appropriate in or user friendly to make the regulations and standards uh, bigger in the sense to explain what the line items are. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it, it's probably just a um, single sentence or a couple of sentences for each of the things, but basically um, use the use the application as the the checklist and expand uh, a little bit for the the actual uh, regulations or the the, the guidelines. If, I mean, if that's feasible. I think that makes sense. <coughs> so can you, can you just give an example of sort of what you're thinking? Um. Because like number two, obviously that, that, that can be easily put into a checklist. I mean, it essentially is. Well, but I'm thinking instead of just having the, the bare title, like existing site conditions. Yeah. So what Just say, have? for example, uh, you know, current use, uh, what what constitutes the, the conditions for that item? And the gross square feet of floor area or, you know, gross square feet of proposed, uh, of, you know, project uh, materials or estimated number of employees, you know, where, uh, Because we know what parking and circulation areas are, but the and professional engineers do. But it's the parking circulation areas, you know, if any, as necessary or I mean, whatever. Okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. well, driveway or dedicated parking. Right. Circulation outside is there. Sidewalk or walkway. Just try to help on the keywords. Okay. But while we're doing that, does it make sense to at least make this available on the website and at the counter? <coughs> In its current form? Well, we still have our site plan application that, okay. you know, details mm -hmm. yeah. essentially what, what they need. Um, I'm just not sure if we should really publish guidelines that haven't. Yeah, I think you probably want to go through them and tweak it with the application and synchronize. So, I'm sorry, I just have this on my phone. Uh, I'm going to show Jesse. I think it's it's uh, sort of what you were looking for. This is a um, it's for a site development. Um, this is for a special exception. It's from Loudoun County. I used to work there, and um, they have. It's really a check. It's like a checklist, but it describes. It has the description of what's needed, right. and then um, in this particular case, on a special exception, they have if it's provided or if it's waived in this specific mm -hmm. condition. Um, but they, I know they have ones for all the Virginia. It's all Virginia stuff. So, it, but it's time. site site plan review. Um, it's um, rezonings, it's all that sort of stuff. So, um, Loudoun County, and then it has the discussion yeah. of um, what it is ahead of time. I mean, the pre-application yeah. comments. And, and that's Virginia. Virginia. Okay. So, we got good next steps on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? So let's move on to the remainder of the planning updates. Uh, review portable classroom proposal for the Reading Public Schools. Modular. Modular. Oh, modular. What did I say? It says portable, but we've been corrected. Modular classrooms. Yeah, we just wanted the board to be aware that this um, has been 
um, circulated and obviously town meeting took action on it and approved it last month. Um, so we wanted to make sure the board had the information and there's not much here for detail. Um, and the plans that are included in the packet are just very, very rudimentary um, aerials with some notations on it about potential locations. Um, so we didn't want that project to move along too much without the board being aware of it. Two things that I hope they're thinking about. Um, one is, um, and they're somewhat related, is uh, I assume that they're thinking about how kids get from the school to the modular classroom. Because <coughs> they are not really laid out on here. Yeah. Um, uh, and the other is how these modular classrooms would be, um, uh, what the security would be related to them. The, and what prompted that thought for me was this one where at, um, at, um, which one is this? at Barrows, where the um, classroom is down the bottom of the hill. Um, so I, I, I'm just, I mean, I just think this classroom, this modular classroom, and all the security issues that go along with schools these days, and then there's this one classroom all by itself with. Um, you know, it's not tied into the same mm -hmm. thing. So well, hopefully they're thinking about that. Either. Yeah, it's, I mean, that, that came up clearly at the town meeting. It was, was it discussed, is. yeah. Which one of the two? The one in the basketball court or the one in the triangular courtyard? Uh, the basketball court. The picture in both? Well, it's de there's a great yeah. differential between the two. It's not really remote, but there's a great differential. So they're by def sort of definition, it, it's not all that tied together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a comment about. Let me see this one was it. it might apply to more than one, but specifically Joshua Eaton, just because I'm familiar with that. But I don't know that they have uh, snow fences on the entire roof. And so once you locate one of these. You're potentially asking people to walk by areas of roof that shed snow. Snow guards? So, yeah, they don't have snow guards. I know they have snow guards over at the uh, west entrances, because I remember the basketball could get stuck up there too, but I'm not sure if the southeast edges, where they're potentially proposing to put one, have them mm -hmm. on the existing building. And so now you're talking about an area that could be become a major thoroughfare. <coughs> wedging people up against the building could have snow or ice coming down off of it. And obviously the fire department would approve all these locations for access. Right. I have uh, two comments. One is specific to Barrows. The option two, that blacks up a big congregation area to drop kids off and pick them up. If you put a modular classroom there, is that going to impact the ability to drop kids off and pick them up. And then... On the barrels? Yeah. On the blacktop? Yeah. That's where all the kids all the line parents. up for class. The and that's parents. where the parents pick them up, yeah. And it's also a primary uh, sled in there. Yeah, point, huh? yeah, that's where all the kids sled. No, you're right. Do a park up there during baseball, too, right? There's a... It basically has a major impact on the, the function of the school uh, when kids are up. It's going to be in the middle of the primary courtyard. Yeah. And my other comment is, I, it's really not related to site plan, but I'll just take this opportunity to ask if they've considered using these classrooms for not kindergarten. Maybe it makes more sense to have older kids use them, ones that can actually, you know, tie their shoes and make their way to <laughs> gym class without having the teachers to get them all bundled up. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't. they specifically said they would only use them for kindergarten. I just thought it allowed them the additional classrooms to program all the new functions. Right. So, 
So my daughter's in this class, and we got a letter from the superintendent, and it, it pretty specifically described at least Barrows as these will be used for kindergarten. That's the way I read it. So, so the curriculum at kindergarten is basically you're going to the classroom, you probably stay most of the day. In the other grades, you have to move and do other things. Yeah, that's true. So you will be getting that overhead of this big thing going in and out, rain or shine, snow, whatever. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember from when there were portable Santa Barrows when it was like it's basically to extend along the whole world we go from that portable classroom. Yeah. Didn't they didn't all these schools have portable classrooms in the past? Yes. Mm -hmm. So why don't before they just put before we were there? The code well, well, no, because the um, both my boys went to Joshua Eaton, and they had the, the portables off on the end. I mean, what happened was that the portables went through their life cycle, and they were removed and replaced by expanding the buildings. So the, the, the where where they were doesn't exist anymore because it's part of the regular building now. Oh yeah. The option of putting them in the teacher's parking lot was not welcome. I thought that was going to be a great place to put it in the heart of uh, at Barrows. This is paid, the utilities are nearby, but currently that parking lot is full by teacher's parking lot. So, yeah. They put the parking back there if you're not a teacher too, right? I'm sure. Well, we're aware of it. We're keeping our eye on it. Yeah. But <laughs> it is out of our scope. But they will come before us? We've suggested that they would, they should come by and, and present before seeking PC. Yeah. And we did it with the library, so yeah, to be consistent. Yeah, it's what Bob That's is. what, yeah. What Bob had said is that <coughs> projects should go through yep. the town process. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you are aware of that, but I belong to that group. I have volunteered oh, yeah. as, a, as a resident, but then that group, my like early childhood group, but then it became a little bit more formal. And you know, I wanted to ask you if you are okay being the CBTC voice in, uh, in that group. So from the, this is the space planning group? The group. early childhood needs group, which is beginning to change its mission right now, since this immediate need emerged that there is no time to basically plan for a mid-term solution. Mid-range. Mid-range. There is a, a short-term need Apparently there is a bubble of coming up at barrows and there are um, classroom needs for art and science that have been suppressed or combining and there is a visible um, deficiency in the curriculum. So by doing this, these three classrooms, several problems get an immediate fix, but it's still short term. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of the group has will be redefined, recodified in a way in our next meeting to begin to look at the specific needs, need the long-term needs. I have a feeling that the group is going to look also at high school needs because mm -hmm. some of the ideas that have been thrown out are involve the high school complex and they affect actually the high school complex, whether it is a building or site or traffic or what have you. So there have been some uh, peculiar uh, needs at the high school level, mm -hmm. which will be sort of matched in to these early childhood needs and early and, and special education needs. So there will be a need statement. And along with that, this is a little difficult. I don't know if you are aware how needs came up 
compared to the other guy. It was actually, um, you know, I need something very abstract. You know, you can say I want A, B, or C, having in mind what you might use it for. So it is a little difficult to get the actual raw need of space or mm -hmm. function. Usually <coughs> things are combined. So by combining things at the high school, you know, at the school committee level or at the superintendent level to fix things, uh, things become a little bit complicated. So we're trying to actually to dissect the pieces to identify the actual needs for spaces. It's a little difficult, uh, but I think we will get there. And then next to the needs, we're going to put the wants. Needs and wants may be like two separate things. Get into the options, and then basically the uh, apparently the thinking process is that there will be a building, the standing building committee that the town might develop or has developed. I don't know if it is. Yeah, that was already. a uh, instructional motion, right? The right. Town, I think they approved it in the last town meeting. So it, it's, an, <coughs> it's manned already. I don't know if it's staffed yet, but I think it will be. Right. But it's only, uh, there's certain triggers to assemble it, depending well, on the that, size of the... That may uh, be their first project, potentially, yeah. once from the options that will be a universal options, or a few preferred ones are we still, those will go to the Peloton. Because this group is not like, it's not builders or planners or contractors or things that the building committee might look at a little bit more pragmatically mm -hmm. to look at like site options, mm -hmm. not site selection options. So that's that's my report and I was told to actually come to you first at some point and report so that you know that this thing is going on. Yeah. And well, I might be coming like every couple of months to let you know where they are. Now this uh, I've heard about the the wish for the town to come back, the school to come back with more definitive solutions. So I've heard that that's, that's what we plan to do. I, I don't know when that will happen. It has to happen because the next school year starts right. you know, in September, so it will be done. And I, for, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid I don't remember where the knowledge came from, but I mean, it's, there's the the town or the school committee or the or whatever um, municipal permanent building committee or commission or something like that, which is the which was a wish list item or something that's actually been established. I'm not sure. Specifically, it's a permanent building committee or review committee for the municipal um, structures or municipal properties, um, and it's it's a good idea. I hope it works, and I would love to have you uh, you know reflect our concerns into that group if you're if you're involved. With. You'll, you'll keep us updated on the progress of that work. So this should work both ways. If you feel that I mean, uh, you are not in a meeting and you discuss something that came up, I will be very comfortable taking a message and uh, you know, attentive reporting or something that can happen. Because actually you probably hear from, from Jim or Jesse things as they evolve on this problem mm -hmm. over the next two or three months things will happen. You know, think about the utilities, transports, stick. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Nice storage. Okay, so are we good <coughs> on the modular classrooms? Mm -hmm. Alright. Last one was the Reading Climate Yes, the climate action, uh, the climate advisory committee is has been working with the town manager, and the town manager asked me to um, follow up on um, their strong interest in locating a uh, container for recycling cardboard. And um, I don't have a plan, but 
um, just pulling up a, a site plan that we had on file. Um, the location that they're looking at is this corner. There's a light pole there. Um, it's pretty innocuous corner. Um, they they think they probably would, would lose one parking space. Um, right now it's a big pile of snow, but um, they what what the town manager asked them to do was to survey the area of businesses to see if there's an interest in it, and then to make sure that if we do need to take a parking space, um, there isn't going to be negative impact on the business community. So um, in your packet, you have a whole series of um, responses to that survey and the letter, and they really did a lot of work on this. Um, most of the businesses um, had an interest. I think there might have been one business that wasn't interested in it, but they were all generally supportive. There was no concern about the loss of the parking space, which I was really surprised about, um, including Bunratty Tavern, which I don't think it's in the, pa the packet. We just got their, um, their survey recently. Because um, obviously, putting a 200-seat restaurant, um, they're, they're probably going to be the most sensitive, I would expect, to any idea of losing any parking spaces back there. So um, yeah, basically, everybody was supportive, and everybody thought it was a good idea. Um, I had some questions about who would um, manage it if there were any problems with um, with it overflowing or, you know, like these bins typically do have the occasional problem, you know, who's going to own it and manage it and run it and be responsible for it. Um, and uh, I think that, that there's a one or two people on the committee that said they would, um, which would be good. Um, the, the hauler, uh, JRM, has agreed to donate the, the bin, and I I think they said it was a six by six container. Mm -hmm. So um, it wasn't an enormous one. You know, the question comes up, do you just put a container in the parking lot or? How's, how Ooh. is it filled? Because here's what I see. People are going to throw their TVs in there yeah. and other trash and yeah. who's going to deal with that? That's so exactly how, what my question was. How is that different than the one that's right out here in the parking lot? <coughs> true. <coughs> so we have one right here. I don't know if you guys know that. Oh yeah, there's there's two. Right. So is this, is this one really... One for cardboard, one for trash, but it just sits in the parking lot. Is this, um, I mean, it's, there's already that function in town right around the corner from <coughs> the town parking lot. So is this really focused on providing, I, I'm going to, this sounds negative, but I'm going to say it anyways, providing um, uh, a, a free and easier way for those businesses that are located downtown to recycle. I mean, yes. it's not really the function. It's not a town function. It's to support those businesses. Correct. Well, it's also the, um, if we can reasonably restrict it or post it for corrugated cardboard only, that's one of the uh, the higher volume air, uh, items that having it out in the open is more benign than, than you know, pla general plastics and the single stream and so forth. That's that's what's right out here is paper and cardboard. I understand, and uh, having uh, a smaller additional one in the parking lot that gets used that is in fact a public parking lot as opposed to the town hall parking lot. Which is not I a just don't apartment. see how you keep somebody from making a late night run and throwing out paint cans and all kinds of waste that then JRM is going to charge us to get rid of even though they're not going to charge us for this container. Who's going to pay for that? When that waste, when that cardboard gets contaminated, someone has to pay for that. Who pays for the one out here? Is that the church or is that the town? That's a good question. I don't who think... Who manages that? I think it's the church. If I had a guess, but that's a guess. I've never seen anything that involved the town in that. Do you have issues with that? That you know of? I mean, the TVs there and stuff? I've never seen it, but it's it's so hidden. Who would even know it was there, I really? Know it was there. You know, to Nick's point, this is going to be right in the middle of the parking lot. 
you know, who manages whatever mm -hmm. mishaps come up. Well, exactly. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's our concern. You know, it's, it's, kid walking by throws his food in there, so now there's food waste, and that's going to be a... The dog walkers. Oh, yeah. I just think it's a big problem. I don't think it's going to work. But in front of the police station, maybe. You know, <laughs> you might have a little more. Well, well we had it encouraged the committee to think about was having one business be the sponsor and own it. Like the uh, Jim Mon from the MF Charles building. If right. he could be the host for it and manage it, or Reading Cooperative Bank, or somebody that knows how to manage things. I guess it's a little confusing to me because isn't, I, uh, um, isn't there, an, my understanding is that there's an incentive these days for each one of these businesses to recycle anyways because they get charged per the the tonnage and the pickup and all so um, so there's our I thought there already was some incentive for on both sides both the businesses and the haulers to try and get more people to recycle so why the town inserts themselves in the middle of that I'm not sh mm. I'm, I'm not against it mm. but I, I'm I'm not sure I understand I, well, I can imagine without being, you know, without in, without any data, I can imagine that the delivery schedule for material could be spiky. You know, if you if you just restock your thing and you've got all the boxes to take care of, this might not fit in your once a week kind of regular um, recycling uh, bin. Uh, that's and, and that's basically imagining. I mean, my younger boy works the the warehouse over at Pier One Imports. So when they have a truck, they've got a truck, you know. And, and there's there's this huge collection of boxes that have to go somewhere. And that's you know it's not a it's not a regular uh, flow of things. It's you know when the truck comes, they've got a truck full of boxes to. To, to re recycle. So, I mean, they're perfectly legitimate concerns. I mean, managing it is the issue and protecting it from, you know, inappropriate things. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's not an unreasonable use of, of you know, six by six area. Well, it's six by six plus the access to it. I don't know, it's a rolling dumpster that gets rolled out to the truck? Um, no, it's not a rolling dumpster. It's, I believe it's got... Um, a container that they pick up? Kind of yeah. Going with the, the forks sticking aside? I think so. so it's, it's access to that, locking the lot. Um, I know there was a survey from the businesses, but everybody at the Mon building has recycling built into their little trash courtyard, right? We made them put them all in. Right. Yeah, that's going to accept all kinds of garbage. That's just not cardboard. I, I just think it's a, we're asking for trouble. Actually, they were saying an eight yard, eight cubic yard recycled containers would be even bigger than this. One out. Well, six and a half feet. It's yeah. the same exact thing. It's a one out. Yeah. So we're just, is this more to just provide to input? Just to get feedback yeah. because, um, you know, it just raises questions. And well, we've spent so much time, like, on the MF Charles building and, mm -hmm. um, you know, for the... If this were to go before the board of selectmen as the roadway commissioners, I think I think that's probably in their arena. Just like when we did the parking lot behind um, Oak Tree, you know, it was a right. combination of CPDC and the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. Well, we we have concerns. I think we yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> managing it and. Um, and, and making sure it's used properly. Are the two I, things? We, right, I think in uh, most of these, I'm looking down through the list, most of these businesses have come before this board in the past 
couple of years, and I, I, I'm, I tend to bet that we discussed recycling with every single one of them, what yeah. their recycling plan was, and where they're going to do both their um, both their trash and their recycling. And there may be some of them I, that said, "Oh, we don't recycle because we don't have we don't generate that much trash." Mm -hmm. But so. I think they probably most of them are covered. But sure, they'd love to have their recycling bin out on town property where they then don't have to deal with it on their own property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds cynical, but realistic. Yeah, <laughs> saving some cash. Too, yeah, I don't I, think we I, need I, to provide recycling facilities for these businesses either. What's that? Well. <laughs> Much as I love Reading Cooperative Bank, they seem to be the most excited about it with their little, you know, yes exclamation point. They'd love to have one of these because they're dealing with their other waste in other ways. But why would we provide a recycling container for Reading Cooperative Bank? Can't use their parking lot. <laughs> Let's put it in their parking lot around Sanborn. You know, it's just that kind of thing. So. I mean, if it were closer to the businesses, the back, <coughs> the back of the house of the businesses, where there are eyes on the street, and there are a couple of businesses such as next who are up front, their entrances from the parking lot. I think right there is like a gym A couple store. of them, yeah. That would be less of an actual area. No, no, it, that's and by the way, there are not many couple great TVs anymore, so you know. That's because they're hiding in people's basements waiting <laughs> for a place <laughs> to throw them. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> 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 well, it's Well, it's all kinds of waste, but yeah. you're you're right. But it you would happen. Have log. Right, but you also this don't want this. Like, this is visually offensive. You can have something else which has a slot, like other towns. So but you also don't want that at the entrance to these little businesses in the back either. Right. You know, to walk by the dumpster to get into the little gift shop that's back there or whatever, whatever's in that yeah. corner. Okay. All right. I think we got good feedback. Yep. Right. Thank sure. you. Any other? Um, so that was. We've oh. got the minutes. Uh, one more thing. Please. I think we have a pending fifth member. Um, it hasn't been appointed yet <coughs> to the Board of Selectmen, but the Appointments Committee met, and um, I think there, there's going to be uh, hopefully some forward movement at the next meeting on April, uh, March 24th. Yeah, March 24th is the Board of Selectmen meeting where this will be taken up. So okay. hopefully we'll have good, uh -huh. good news on that front. More coverage, yeah. Baptized of it, the April 6th <laughs> <laughs> Any other updates to provide? Um, we're still waiting on Bun Raddies. They've had a couple of hiccups. Um, construction issues that um, they ran into. Hmm. Not a construction, not according to plan. Oh, uncovered. So um, they have to come up with some alternatives now to make it work. Uh. So that's them. And um, we met today with Fuddruckers. They may have um, a renovation coming. Mm -hmm. They're looking, they have a very nice problem. They need more seats. Yeah, they do. The new um, this is packed. Yeah, the new ropes, whatever it's called, the well, place the that raised beanstalk. Yeah. Beanstalk. They're they're doing great great guns business as a result of that. So yeah, the place is packed. And could spend a whole afternoon there. <laughs> God knows I have. <laughs> Not that familiar with it, but um. You the beanstalk, you get a cheeseburger, you get ice cream, you watch the, the water show. Good. Local entertainment. Yep. 
Well, they're, they're, that's a nice problem to have, so we're gonna see where that goes. He's working up some plans. I see these kids on my hockey team. After this game, I'm going with the beanstalk. They get so excited. <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> that's good. Especially yeah. after this winter, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I saw little Chuck's opened up. Yeah, I saw that too. He snuck in. I saw the big open flag. When did that happen? Yeah, well, we had reviewed that plan way, way back. Yeah. Well, that's the, the so Washington Street ago. corner there. Yeah. Yeah. Little Chuck's Deli. Cool. And then all of a sudden they opened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stop in there. Yep. You know, if we can. <laughs> Fix the rust beef sign. <laughs> oh, is that um, Jimbo's? Jimbo's, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so can we so we're good. dispose we're good. of some minutes quickly here? I want to knock them out. I do not have the uh, 12 okay. minutes Thank for you. you. Uh, so it's just the November 3rd and December 8th, and Nick provided comments on both, and Jeff provided comments on November. Yeah, the only thing the uh, November 3rd, it says that I moved to the CPDC. Um, I suppose it means the CPDC approved the minutes just on the last page. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In both cases. Yep. <laughs> and then I'll make the same motion. Sorry. All those in favor? I've got, I read the um, November or December 8th. So I got some, just, I could just give them to you. Sure. And then I had two questions, but just one that I could find. Page six, towards the bottom, all the lighting will be on timers, so they will be off when they have left the building. I don't know if that's accurate. Where was it, page what? Uh, page six, towards the bottom, it's the last full paragraph. I just know lighting, that people are gonna look back at these. I just wanna make sure we're I on the I thought I commented page. on that as well. It's, a, it's basically all of the exterior lighting. So I all think the lighting will be on timer, so they will be off when the building is unoccupied. <coughs> page six? Really? Yeah, this is Why do I not see that? It's a last sentence on page six. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Right? I didn't see that. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, I thought I had commented on it. It looks like you did. I re the version I reviewed was, yes, and um, it was in our packet. So, okay, so we're good with Nick's comment. Question on, sorry guys, I know it's late. Okay. Page 10, the middle starts with Mr. Bob Salter. Mr. Salter also stated there is no on street parking due to the nursery school. Where's there a nursery school? It's across the street, it's next to the, um, it's, it's attached to the church. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the, it's All in right. the church, right. Okay, I didn't realize there was a nursery it's school. Fire. Got it, okay, then we're good. <laughs> Move that the CPDC approve the minutes for the meeting of is it December eighth, yeah, two thousand fourteen, as amended. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Five minutes to spare. <laughs>